Welcome back to Chuck Builds. In this video, we are inside of Portainer on our virtual private server, and we're about to get started with setting up our Docker containers to host our website. I wanna remind you that this is a multi-part series. If you haven't watched the earlier videos, please do so for some very important context. And I will remind you that I am doing this for a organization. I'm not actually doing it in this video for an organization, but I had previously done so, and I want you to set up this as if you were. Because of that, we are not hosting Portainer on our own hardware. We're hosting it on a virtual private server called Hetzner that we set up in the last video. And I wanna just call this out as a reminder to keep your IP protected and to keep your firewalls um, protected as well. For this video, I currently have a firewall open with SSH port open and then our Portainer port open. So inside of Portainer, we can see our local environment. If you don't see this page, just click the home button right here and you should see it. We are going to click on local and then we're gonna expand the sidebar. Our local environment has several things. We have stacks, containers, images, volumes, and networks. We also have some templates and some host and events details, but primarily we're going to be working with these items here in the screen or over here on the side. What we'll be using today is called a stack. The stack has multiple containers in it, and the reason we're using the stack is for something called Docker Compose, and it lets us put multiple containers onto our Portainer instance simultaneously, reference each other easily, and have them start in the correct order. For instance, if we use ghost blog, it needs to have a MySQL server up and running already before ghost blog can start. If ghost blog starts without a MySQL container, it fails to start and you'll see that in the logs pretty plainly. So it really helps when we have that kind of logic applied to our stack. We also have networks that sometimes you might see or find the need to create a network to tie together multiple Docker containers without accessing the outside internet or other containers. We're not really gonna get into that. We're gonna be primarily using our bridge network. The bridge network will allow us to access the internet and also each other. And the host network adds a few extra Docker options that I wouldn't worry about too much. None will keep the Docker running by itself without any connection to anywhere. We're gonna be using a stack today and we're going to add a stack. We'll have to choose a name that's gonna be all lowercase. So for this one, I'll choose website stack, website dash stack. And that's gonna be a prefix that we see on our volumes and containers later. We're going to be pasting some code into this web editor. And so this will be somewhere that we're pasting into a lot of code. Now I have the following code that we're about to use on my website. I don't think I'll have it in the description because it's a lot. And we're gonna go through and make our changes as we need to make them. So we've got a lot happening here and I'm just gonna run through it. The general structure of this is YAML. So it is very sensitive to spaces. Spaces between rows is very important for nesting of options. If you see how we have these indentations, you will have errors if you mess this up. These environment variables that are all caps or with underscores are very sensitive. You have to have it exactly right or it won't work. This overall huge document is called a Docker Compose. We're going to copy and paste this whole thing into our Portainer web editor right here in a moment but sometimes I find it's easier to edit this inside of Visual Studio where we have nice highlighting to make it easy to read. We have blocks within our services. Think about our services as our containers in this overall stack. We have MySQL. This is a container, a Docker container. We have PostgreSQL. This is another container. We have our ghost container that we can minimize here on the side, but all of these options here we have a caddy container, which is for a reverse proxy. We also have N8N and Formbricks. We have one more container here at the end that I haven't spoken about called File Browser, and that's gonna be used to edit our caddy file. We also have some volumes down here at the end that this stack will create the volumes that will then be referenced later on by these containers. I would strongly encourage you to take the time to go through this, just kind of read it once over so you know what I'm talking about. And then now we're gonna dive in. So our MySQL container 
exists to support our ghost container. You're going to notice that our ghost container depends on MySQL. MySQL database password, when I highlight it right here, is also highlighted up here. This is what we're referencing. So what you should do is replace this password. You should come in here and change this with a randomly generated password in both places so that it can still access it, but it's not the default root password or user name and password. Now, for the sake of this video and for the sake of copying this to your computer, I'm going to keep this with the nice names, MySQL DB, MySQL DB. For Postgres, we can see our Postgres password or Postgres user. I have our databases already set for the defaults that the apps are going to use. When we create our MySQL container here, it's going to create a database called Ghost. It's going to create a user called Ghost. We're going to reuse that again in this Ghost container for our user and database. If you want to change it, you absolutely can. Just make sure you're changing it in both places. I would strongly suggest that you change at least your password to something random. Additionally, you're going to see inside of this a lot of highlights for your domain in all caps. I've done this so that you can grab this your domain, press control F to search for your domain, and then do this little drop down, and we can type our domain name and change it everywhere at once. So note, I have it for .com. If you're using a .org or .net, you'll need to change that as well. But I'm going to change mine to Chuck builds a website. And I'll start pressing enter, and it's gonna change it one highlight at a time until we get them all. So if we come through here, we can see that our ghost website's URL is chuckbuildsawebsite.com. Our ghost mail options are going to be chuckbuildsawebsite.com. And it's gonna replace the necessary URL for our domain in all the areas that we need to. Now, you'll see in the Formbricks environment variable that there are several areas, next off secret, cron secret, and encryption key that has this command, OpenSSL rand hex 32. We're going to copy this command and we're going to put it into our putty SSH connection to the server. We're going to run this command and it's going to give us a hex string of characters that we then need to enter here. This encryption key must be exactly 64 characters and this command will get that for us. So if you have forgotten, what we're going to use to get to our SSH for the server is a program called putty and we'll grab the IP address from our server here. We'll copy this and we'll paste this as our host name. We have the firewall for SSH still open. And we'll come to Putty with the IP and we'll press open. We're gonna log in as root and then we're gonna use the password that we set earlier. So once we're in Putty, we're gonna grab our command from the stack, the open SSL rand hex 32. And we'll paste that into our SSH window and we're gonna get a string of characters and we'll do control shift C to copy this and we'll paste it back into our stack. We're gonna run this command two more times and paste those numbers back here. And note that we're getting a different one each time. We'll just use the up arrow, enter, control shift C, and then we'll paste it here as well. So we have that information and our stack is almost ready to be pasted into Portainer. However, we still need to create a Mailgun instance and get all of our Mailgun set up before we do that. 